Do you remember that time that God regretted making humans so much that he felt like he needed to drown everyone in order to reset humanity? But then after the flood, he realized that it wasn't going to work because human beings are just evil from their youth. And so he had to apologize for doing that with a rainbow in the sky. And then he told the people who got off the ark to be fruitful and multiply. And so they did. And later down the road, they all come together as one unified society to work together, to thrive, to build a city in the sky and make a name for themselves. And what does God do? He said, if they can do this, well, then nothing will be impossible for them. They're thriving without me. And so he confused all of their languages and stopped them in the middle of their community project so they would be scattered throughout the earth and wouldn't be able to communicate to finish what they were doing. So for the first time in the Bible, people are coming together, they're working together, they're living in peace, and they are thriving. And God is still not happy with what they're doing. He doesn't like that they are thriving without him, that they are making a name for themselves without him. And I think it's so important to pay attention to how church leaders tell this story and what lessons they want you to get out of it. Because that story to me is a perfect picture of how ex-Christians are treated when they leave the church. It doesn't matter how happy they are. It doesn't matter how much they're thriving, how well they're doing. There are still going to be people from the church that want them to fall flat on their face. They do not want us to thrive if we are without God. They do not want us to be happy if we are without God. It does not matter how well we're doing because if we do not have God, we have nothing in their eyes. And so they are hoping and praying that we fall on our face and we come crawling back to Jesus and we might suffer for the rest of our lives, but at least we've got God. And I would think if God were a good God and a loving God, he would be concerned with your happiness and your well-being, even if that meant that he wasn't the source of it.